This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now, yesterday, man, I got to tell you, I was sitting there reading, and this is probably about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. All of a sudden, man, I get this knock at my door. I'm like, man, what the heck is going on? Who is who in the world is knocking at my door right now? Usually people, there's no, usually no one ever comes to my door uninvited. I'm like, man, who the heck is this disturbing the aquaponics guy while he's in his rhythm and reading? I get up, come to the door. I'm looking out the window or the little peephole. I'm like, man, who the heck is this, man? See an old little guy at the end, man. I'm like, man, who is this, man? Open up the door. Boom. One of my old customers, old, old customers. I call them the fiends. These are the fiends because they're uh, fiending for the greens. So he's uh, uh, one of the old customers used to come all the time, man. So he's fiending for the greens. He's like, man, hey, what's going on, man? I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, yeah, man. Start scratching on himself because he's fiending right now. <laughs> he's fiending right now. He's scratching, you know, like, you know how they do when the drug people on drugs, he's scratching on themselves. Uh, he's fiending. He's like, man, what's going on, man? He's like, man, I, I, I've been trying to catch you. And every time we come past, I just can't get a hold of you. I can't find you. I'm trying to find out what's going on. And this is months ago since I've stopped selling greens. It's been months and months ago. And he says, he's been keep trying to catch me. He said, yeah, um, I want to know what was going on. Are you still selling them? I said, no, nah, man, we're, we're not selling them right now, sir. Um, right now we're uh, setting up a school and we transitioned from selling the, the greens, and then now we're doing the school. So we're only doing one thing at a time, man. And the look on his face, man, he's, he, had a, he had a real serious look on his face, man. I'm like, yeah, so, you know, right, I can't really do nothing right now for you, man. But um, maybe if you come back around March, April, I said, maybe I'll have something for you. I seen the look on his face. I knew he was fiending. Because when you get a taste of these greens, these baby salad greens, I'm telling you, you turn into a fiend. I had people driving 30, 40, 50 miles to come down here just to get a taste of the greens, to get a bag, two bags, three bags, four bags, whatever they're going to buy. They will drive town down to come and get them because you can't get them nowhere else. You can't go to Walmart to get these baby salad greens, and they just taste that good. So he's fiending, man. I'm looking at him. He's like, yeah, man, me and my wife, we just uh, uh, decided. We said it was a nice day, so we decided to see if we can come by and catch you. He's like, yeah, I caught you this time. So, yeah, I'm like, yeah, we don't have nothing right now, sir. I'm sorry. But like I said, I told him to come back, and maybe I'll have something for him um, in uh, March, April. I might grow a few things for a few of the fiends that's hooked around here. There's a lot of fiends that are hooked, man, creeping, knocking on your door all types of uh, times of the day. You know how people who are on drugs, man, they come around. If people, some of you guys who lived in poor neighborhoods, man, they'll come knocking on doors. Like, they don't, they're looking for anything they can get, get a quick fix. So, um, it's just crazy to know that there's people out there who really, really appreciate the type of stuff, you know, that I was growing. And they really uh, 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 developed a nice taste uh, for the greens that were uh, produced around here. Because you can't get them nowhere else. Like I said, the freshest greens, it ain't nothing like coming to someone's farm and watching the greens get cut right in front of you. Woo, man. I, so I just had to share that with you guys, man. I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Someone came knocking on the door, man. They don't care. And the people don't care. When they want what they want, they want what they want. And you got to respect that, man. So anyways, let's go on with what we got today. We have an aquaponic system review from Kevin. He's going to go ahead and let us see what he has going on. We're going to go ahead and review, see some of the good things, some of the bad things, some things we can recommend changing, if any. And uh, we'll provide some feedback. So you guys, let's get right into it. Woo! Hey Brooklyn, this is Kevin from Connecticut. Connecticut in the house. What's up, Kevin? Woo! This is my setup. I've got my fish tank up here. It is a 14 gallon fish tank. I currently have four goldfish. So the first thing I want to say, Kevin, um, is that I know this is a new setup, but you may possibly experience algae blooms in this uh, uh, with this tank setup because the, the tank is not covered. And although the light fixture is not above the fish tank and it's on the be is below it, algae are still very efficient at siphoning light, and you still may experience a problem. So if you see any algae that develops, just know that you just have to cover this tank. So let's say that real quick, and then um, excuse me, then we can move on from there. And I noticed that you have. Let me see. 
Okay, you have a fresh little solids lifting overflow, move, removing all those solids out. It's a good thing right there. Um, the tank, the the tank shape may cause some issues because it has the rounded little rounded edges, and it may cause a little problems. You may have some solids that get stuck in the corner, uh, but if not, that would be great, um, and uh, you'll be able to use this tank for the hobby hobby setup. It comes in from here through those pipes down into my media bed. I currently have a sock as a filter because I haven't bought worms yet. Um, but basically it fills and drains, goes down into my deep water bed. Now, as most of you guys all know that I am not a fan of hybrid setups. I've done these in the past, but I'm not a fan of hybrid setups just because it throws off of the, uh, it throws off the effectiveness of the system. Each one of these systems requires separate feeding rates, flow rates. It's just a different thing. So when you mix them all together, the effectiveness of the system is thrown out of balance. That's just the way it is. Um, so I want to put that out up front, uh, that this is, uh, I'm going to approach this as you just keeping it as this small hobby system and you're not going to expand it and look to do anything else with this system other than the small system that you have right here. So with that being said, so you have it connecting, you have it going from the fish tank into the media bed. The media bed is flood and draining coming down into the deep uh, or to your uh, floating raft. Now, with your floating raft, you may want to consider or you should consider putting some maybe some um, some ball valves at the end of them in order to control the flow rate. Because you want to make sure that both of those DWC uh, troughs are getting the same or the equivalent flow rate. You don't want one getting a small amount and the other one getting the, the, the uh, large volume of flow rate because they both need to have equal access to the nutrients that are coming, um, that are being circulated through the system. And if one of them has a small amount of flow going in there, obviously it's not going to get the, the, the correct nutrient replenishment um, in that trough. So you want to look for that. We each of them have a pump or air stone in it. And you have the air stone, which is smooth, perfect for the DWC or the floating raft system. You need extra aeration in there. So I'm glad that you have that in there in order to provide, keep that dissolved oxygen level up in the, um, the, the floating raft unit so the plants can grow as effectively as possible. And then those in the back there drain back down into my sump tank, which also has a return feed. So there's plenty of air in there. I'm growing right now. I've got kale up here in the media bed. I've got a avocado pit that I sprouted. That's grown in soil though. And then I've got some lettuces down here. So you see that lettuce right there that's sticking straight up looking like the Eiffel Tower? That lettuce right there is telling you, Kevin, my man, I need some more light. I'm not doing well with the amount of light that's provided. So that thing is stretching out right now. And you're probably not going to be able to use that as it continues to grow out. So we want to make sure you're mindful of that. Either your light is too high up or it's just not intense enough. So we want to be mindful of that um, and make sure that there's nothing else that's, uh, that there's no other plants that are going to be experiencing that. So pay attention to that because I see that, but I don't see in the back. I'm looking at the other lettuce in the back and they're nice and short, nice, short and stubby. So I don't know if you transplanted these at different times or if they came from different systems, but obviously there's something going on that's causing the difference, um, the difference between one of them being short and stubby and the other one being elongated. So let's pay attention to that. Both sides. Look at them right over here again. See, the same thing with these two front lettuce. These look like, these are probably romaine lettuce. That's what I would guess they, they are, but I may be wrong. But, um... You see these already, these are already elongated. They can't even hold themselves up anymore. They over here, the, I call these seedlings with a gangster lean. These right here are the seedlings with a gangster lean. They're leaning all the way over. They can't hold themselves up. So let's pay attention to that and uh, make sure that we prevent that in the future, uh, prevent that from happening in the future. Because once it happens like this, the chances are these things will not grow out um, and they will be uh, kind of deformed as they start to develop even further. You got to get them right in the right stage. You want them sh nice and short, nice and short ones. Oh, I need some microgreens over there. Just looking for any feedback you could give me on how to make my system better. Thank you. 
So overall, Kevin, it's a decent system for a hobby setup. Decent system for a hobby setup. This will not, uh, obviously, you know here that we teach, I, I, I want to instill in people practices that they can take and use for the professional world. Because there's you, you, can, you can have your hobby setups and you can still use the correct skills that you can transfer over to a professional setting. Because many of you are going to find yourself in that circumstance. And that's why I take the approach that I take. You may think it's a hobby now, but something may come up later on where you need to transition. Like, oh, I have a skill that I've already been working on for the past two, three, four years. All I got to do is expand it up, and now I'm in business, and I can make some more money. That's why I – one of the main reasons why I teach the way that I teach, that I want professional um, type of uh, uh, techniques and practices. But this is a hobby, hobby setup. I really don't have too much to complain about this. It is, that is, a, you know, it's made for a hobby setup. Although I would change um, the way that you have it connected. I don't like anything that's relying on another system in order for, for uh, an, uh, the particular system to perform. For instance, I don't like the, um, the DWC or the floating raft, depending on the media bed, to siphon correctly in order for the, the, the floating raft to work properly. I don't like that. So I would always split flow things. I would have the media bed with its own pressurized line, and I would have the, um, the floating raft with its own pressurized lines um, to make sure everything is running independent of one another. That is only probably the main suggestion that I would make out of this and the few minor ones that I made um, previously throughout the video. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, it's not anything too crazy, but just know that this system has its limitations. And the limitations is pretty much what you have it at right here. And that's like the hobby setup and you grow on a few plants for yourself and all that. And that's pretty much it. So if we keep it like this, you know, you would be able to, um, the, the small little tweaks and stuff that you have to continuously make, it's not going to add up and be too crazy, but you start getting larger and larger and expanding with this, then you're going to start to really feel it. You're going to start to really feel it. And you're going to miss out on a lot of, um, things that you could have if you designed it in a, um, you know, in a more professional way. So I, it's, I don't know your budget and all that. So we won't get into all that, your tanks and all that. Obviously you probably know that that's not all the way the correct stuff that you can be using, but you know, like I said, I don't know your circumstance. So that is fine to get the job done probably for your circumstance, I should say. So Kevin, I appreciate you sending your video. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, anyone else with questions, Brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com video format. I'm more than help, uh, happy to help you out. Look forward to helping you guys out. Want to prevent all biscuit headedness from occurring. And we want to go ahead and push the practice of aquaponics further because there's still a lot of people who are unaware of aquaponics and the, the beauty of this farming method. It's fun. It's something that kids enjoy thoroughly. Um, it's something that the younger generation can get into. It's something that can, can be used for urban farming for the newer generation to come up, take control over the, the, the food and be able to provide fresh, fresh, fresh and clean food to the public. And that's what we look for. That's what we're looking for. And that's what we're hoping for. And especially getting the youth involved into farming once again. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!